So today we are going to speak with biohacker Faraz Khan on how to hack thinning hair and how to regrow our hair fuller and thicker. So Faraz is a former computer scientist turned longevity educator. He's also a speaker and of course, an awesome biohacker. I say he's an advanced biohacker. <laughs> and he started this journey into longevity and anti-aging when he first saw his parents who literally aged before his eyes and who hasn't seen this happen to their parents before. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty sad and it, it was motivating for him to move forward. And, and he went from helping large media, entertainment, pharma, and life sciences companies to helping everyday people like you and me beat back some of that unwanted and unnecessary signs and symptoms of aging. It's okay to keep the good stuff. We just don't want some of the stuff that bothers us. And then he launched his podcast called Anti-Aging Hacks in 2019. So he's been doing this for a while and he interviews the top minds in longevity, anti-aging and health. You gotta go check out that podcast. If you like mine, you're gonna love Faraz's too. So I originally found Faraz at the Anti-Aging Summit last December, which he organized and hosted some of these amazing experts in health and longevity. I was really blown away and it was super cool. And he even had some of my favorite doctors on there. I was like, how do you get these people? He's amazing. And, um, and through all these amazing interviews and his personal research and his own experience, Faraz decided to get further serious into why hair starts to thin and he's armed himself with science-based tactics to not only grow better hair but to get a whole lot of confidence that goes with it. So without further ado, meet Faraz. Welcome. Thank you so much Zora. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so excited to see you again. If you guys uh, haven't heard our first podcast, we talked about skin and scars. And that blew me away. You just gave me so many amazing ideas and things that I, I never heard of before. And I'm very interested in skin. And actually, it is one of our top rated podcasts still. And that was a while ago, right? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, people people do love that the, the, the skin and the scars. I mean, really, I, when you told me how to reverse the scars, I was I was really surprised. I kind of thought those hang around forever. So thank you so much for giving all those tips. So sure. how about the hair and wellness? Like, give us a little background into, you know, how you, you got into hair and, and, and how that's affected you and, and where you're learning all your stuff from. Yeah, sure. So. I started losing my hair in college when I was still 20 years old and I was a soccer athlete. I was on the soccer team and, you know, I thought the world of myself, I had a lot of confidence and as hair started to come off and my hands in the shower and during the day, I would see them on the floor on the desk. It started to really eat away at my confidence and my identity. And I was getting desperate because it was falling at a fairly rapid rate. And uh, so I approached I called my mother and my parents, my friend's parents, went to holistic doctors, tried all kinds of natural therapies, hair oils that smelled really bad. I put onion juice in my scalp, which smells even worse. I tried <laughs> biotin. I tried, you name it. I tried shampoos. I tried all these te uh, techniques, but none of them really worked for me. They did slow down my hair a little bit, but it wasn't, it didn't stop falling. And so out of sheer desperation, a few years later, I got on a pharmaceutical drug that it is used for men to stop hair loss, but it also has side effects that I, I experienced a little bit of. And so I was, you know, kind of scared of the drug the whole time, but I was desperate that I wanted to keep using it. And a few years ago, when I got into anti-aging and longevity, and I said, man, there's got to be a way to figure this out naturally. There's got to be a way. So I traveled the world. I went to hair loss conferences. I met some of the top doctors in the world. Then I went to their individual offices, interviewed them on camera, behind camera, spent hours with each, read, I don't know, hundreds of scientific papers, talked to hair loss researchers, and finally came up with a solution, a hair growth system that can really address the root causes of hair thinning, but also start giving you thicker, fuller, and stronger hair in a short period of time. But did you look, I'm sure you looked into genetics and maybe your parents or your family history. Was there any gene, gene polymorphism there or something that's 
cause the hair loss that you think originally? Yeah, there's there's many, many genes that are implicated in hair loss. There's new science coming out of this. But uh, I could see it visually because my my mother on my mother's side, all my uncles were bald. Mm. And hair loss is a genetic condition in, in a lot of ways. And so you can inherit it from your father's side or your mother's side, actually. And so you don't have to look very far. Sometimes it can skip a generation. So you have to look at your grandparents. But uh, that's a telltale giveaway. The other telltale giveaway that this is a you know, androgenetic alopecia is what it's called, is uh, the pattern. Men have this pattern on the top. You've seen men, they have hair on the sides and on the back, but they, they lose hair at the top. For women, this is also the most common type of hair loss, androgenetic alopecia, hormonal genetic hair loss. And this happens right behind the part. So they start to lose hair right behind the hairline, sometimes the temples, but uh, typically it's the top of the hair. That's where it happens for women. So is it not, you know, what was it, the saying goes, your mother's father, something like that. It's actually anyone in your family can give you yeah. this gene. Unfortunately, there's, there's too many cases we've seen where uh, it comes from either side of the family. Mm, darn it. <laughs> My poor son. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, all right. There is some genetic component, but you can hack it. Is that's what you're saying? Because you have that gene and you've lost, seen that, but you have been able to overcome it. But that's, that's pretty interesting. So what are other reasons that people may lose their hair from just yeah. other than genes? Sure. So the first reason, as we discussed, is androgenetic alopecia. This is because of genetics and hormones together. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I ex may explain this, the genetics is what makes your hair follicles susceptible, more susceptible to the impact of these androgen hormones. And the hormones, that's the second part of it, they come up there and they attach to the hair follicles and they make your hair weaker and thinner. And over time, it just stops growing. It just stops coming out of the scalp. And so that's the number one reason is the hormonal hair loss. Uh, the other, there's other reasons for it, of course. You can also lose a hair uh, if there's a, acute stress. For example, you're moving homes, you get a divorce, you, you know, lose a loved one, you're taking some very tough exams, which probably you're doing, Zora. And so some of these things which are acute stressors, you might get an infection or a virus, uh, you might have surgery, very, very acute things, either psychologically or physically, can cause a big shed two and a half or three months later. So that's called telogen effluvium, acute hair loss. And then there's a chronic telogen effluvium, which is just ongoing hair loss, shedding. This is not hormonal, but this, your hair just keeps shedding over time. There's many reasons for this. There's, um, th you could have a lot of stress. You could have nutrient deficiencies. You could have, you could be taking medications. There could be a thyroid issue. So this is ongoing um, and it has to be diagnosed on a particular case, on a, mm. on a case by case basis, really. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, the hormone, the hormone fluctuations, when you think women through pregnancy, uh, sometimes their hair is fantastic, their skin is glowing, and sometimes it goes completely reverse, so <laughs> losing their hair. And then once the baby's born, everything kind of gets back to normal. So definitely the hormonal component. And an interesting, well, you know, we covered in my gerontology class, um, skin and hair and, and yeah, you know, we were definitely when you get older, you tend to have thinning hair. So it's not uh, unusual. It's something I think that happens to a lot of people. And a lot of people would just say, you know what, I'm going to accept this as aging, right? And, and it's easier for a man, I think, to deal with that because they're, you know, I guess it's something sexy to be bald too, you know, right? And, and there's a whole new wave. But for women, I think it's a lot more traumatic. I, I, don't, I don't hate to like, um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of men going here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it is traumatic for a men too, but it just seems to me, and this is just my you know, subjective opinion. Uh, yeah, that it, it would, it's just less acceptable for women. And we, mm -hmm. we want to, we, so we're very, very traumatized by it. Yeah, so, it's, it's extremely traumatic for young men. If yeah. you're losing your hair when you're nine, between 19 and 30, uh, when you haven't figured yourself out, you're still trying to figure out your identity and what you stand for, it's extremely traumatic. And I went through that when for, you know, for 10 years, every day I had thoughts about my hair. I had out of the 50,000 thoughts we have, maybe 10,000 were about my hair or how to save it, right? It was really, really brutal. And, uh, but for women, like you said, th this is not an option. So they, 
they they struggle with this their whole life and what new science is finding out that if you live long enough you're going to be impacted by androgenetic alopecia or hormonal hair loss at, at every age so really no one is no one is immune anymore from some of the recent data that we're seeing so if it's hormonal then does that mean we can take some hormone replacement therapy and that will help yeah so what happens is with androgenetic or the hormonal hair loss is for women i'll talk women first uh, when they approach 40 and beyond, their, as you know, their hormones start changing. Progesterone levels start going down. Estrogen levels follow soon after. And the relative imbalance with testosterone can sometimes cause a trigger where it's not the same anymore, right? So that relative imbalance can make your hair follicles more sensitive to this hormone called DHT. Uh, other women sometimes will take testosterone therapy. So they're increasing testosterone in their body exogenously. That can also trigger... Uh, the hair loss. Uh, and then thirdly, some women might just have more testosterone to start with in the beginning, absolute. And as levels change, that can trigger. So the triggers can be very, very subtle. You might not know what triggers it, but once it starts, then you have to address it using either hormone balancing through natural ways, or you could go down uh, the pharmaceutical path as well, or just you know take hormones directly into your body. So we, I'm a little confused. So it sounded like you said testosterone would trigger the hair loss. Where yes. I would, to me, testosterone means, you know, we have more muscle growth, maybe more hair. Sometimes if you do too much, you start growing a mustache, right? We don't want to go too far. So I would think that actually the horm the testosterone would give us more hair rather than. But, yeah. Let me explain. Yeah. So testosterone converts. Testosterone is a beautiful hormone and I'm all about it. Uh, the, the main hormone that's implicated in hair loss is DHT, which is a metabolite of testosterone. So testosterone converts to DHT. DHT is responsible for beard on you know, your hair uh, or beard on your face for men, uh, but it's also responsible for hair loss on the scalp. And this is the million dollar question. People don't know why DHT has these dual effects right next to each other. But that's what DHT does. And so what I mean by testosterone is testosterone in our bodies gets converted to DHT and that DHT is the bad guy. So whatever we do, we want to try to minimize DHT production or creation or conversion in our body. And we want to leave testosterone as is. So I guess going one step further is the DHT that's the bad guy, but increases in testosterone relative or absolute can increase DHT, which, which causes hair loss. Mm. So imagine it's a matter of getting it in the right balance, in the right proportion, just right. like anything in hormones. So that makes sense. So you're saying that um, men and women lose the hair from the top, the forehead, all the way sort of the back. But what about the people who have just that back patch in the back of their head? And is there a difference um, in, in importance of where you're losing your hair? I know it's traumatic everywhere, but is, does that give you a clue of the reasons why you're losing your hair? Yeah, absolutely. For men, it's very easy to see because you see that pattern from the front all the way to the back and they typically lose all their hair. Some men don't. They might just lose the temples a little bit or they might just have a little bit of hair loss in the crown in the back, as you mentioned. Those are still all hormonal hair loss. It just doesn't affect the entire hair, uh, the scalp. Um, for women, again, we talked about behind the hairline, maybe even on the hairline and then right up top and the crown, those are the areas most impacted by androgenetic alopecia or, or, homo, or hormonal hair loss. Now, there's the other types of hair loss that we talked about, the, the chronic uh, telogen effluvium or the acute, where you lose a lot of hair suddenly with acute, or with chronic where it's ongoing, but the cause is not hormonal. It could be you know, stress, or as we talked about medications or others. Then this type of hair loss happens all over your scalp, everywhere. And so this is one of the key ways you can figure out what type of hair loss you have is you just have to look a little bit deeper into your scalp and lift your hair from the side if you're a woman, lift your hair on the side of your scalp, on the back and have somebody else inspect it. If you're thinning all over your scalp, then it's not hormonal, right? It's also other things, meaning. Um, but if it's just in the top and the front, then you have a fairly good uh, indication that it is hormonal. So, okay, if, if the hormone, how, if it's hormonal, we know that we could, there are some ways we can attack that, but if it's due to stress and then the moment you have your stress under control, does the hair grow back or is it yes. permanent? Yeah, yeah. So 
outside of the hormonal hair loss, but let me address that. Hormonal hair loss with DHT will start to thin your hair follicles. It gets thinner and thinner and thinner until it can't even break through the scalp. And so then it just dies. It basically becomes dormant, the follicle does. But with all the other types of hair loss we discussed, the other two, either you know the acute one or the chronic one where it's either thyroid or it's stress or it's medications, this or nutritional, all of these, when you address the root causes, all of these hair will grow back 100%, right? Mm -hmm. Unless it's also paired with the hormonal hair loss. If they're both happening at the same time, then you might not get the hair back. But if it's just because of these reasons, then all of this hair comes back. Oh, that's good. Okay. So you can. So I just want to clarify too, because we, we are mixing up, at least I am, uh, you know, hair loss, you know, and the boldness and then thinning hair, right? There's probably people out there who's like, I don't have a patch or anything, but I see it thinning. Is that a sign that eventually they will lose all the hair and it will, they will go bald? Like you said, the hair is so thin, it can't break through the follicle. Yeah, so women experience hair loss differently than men, right? You've seen men, they go completely bald. For women, that does not happen, thankfully. And their hair thin, so they start losing hair all mm -hmm. over, but it's not completely gone. So that's a plus. But if you are in the shower and you're shampooing your hair and you pull a few hairs out and you have them in your hand and you stick them you know, uh, against the tiles in the shampoo mm -hmm. and you see that they're different thickness, typically that hair thinning, when the hair is getting thinner, that's a hormonal component. Because when mm -hmm. you're shedding your hair, it doesn't thin for the other reasons. It doesn't get thinner. But uh, if there's two hairs or three hairs or five hairs and you're sticking them on the tile and you're seeing different widths of these hair, different thickness, then it's a very good indication that you are undergoing hormonal hair loss. Mm. Assuming you still have your eyesight because <laughs> if you need glasses, maybe you can't see how thick or thin they are on the wall. <laughs> Well, so, then maybe after the shower, come back and then look at him with your glasses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Interesting. Oh, wow. Okay. So super, I just get, I learned so much from you. So what are there, is it possible? So you did mention that there may be some nutri nutritional deficiencies and yes. that would be aside from the hormones and the genes and all that. I mean, the people Absolutely. who are just losing or th having thin hair just because of nutrient deficiencies. Absolutely. There's the big four that are, that are known in the hair loss world, the big four nutrients that you must have enough in your body or these, all of them can cause hair loss. And the big four are zinc, iron, folate, and B12. And unfortunately, a lot of vegans and some of my vegan friends in LA have started losing or have started losing some hair because they've gone vegan. Typically, when you go vegan, you are deficient in B12. You can be deficient in folate, definitely iron. So they, we had a FaceTime call the other day and they're like, well, why am I losing hair? And I said, are you supplementing with these three? They're like, no. And so uh, we're getting them on a the program to get these, these three micronutrients. And so, so those are the big four. Typically, you know, most people are not replete or most people have enough of these, but if you are following certain diets, you're not eating meat, then uh, it's, it's time to check into these four first. Oh, interesting. So what, what are those four and how much do we need of each of them? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so as I mentioned, there's zinc, vitamin D3, uh, so, sorry, zinc, vitamin D3, B12, and iron, those are the big four. Not yeah, but four how much do we need of each? Yeah, so if you look at the, if you get a blood test and you see you know, where you are, for all of these, you wanna be in the middle of the range. So whatever the range is in your country, because they're different in the US and they're measured differently overseas and in India where I just got tested recently. So you wanna be in the middle of the range. You don't wanna be on the low end, for, especially for vitamin D3. Here, the range is from 30 to 90, and you wanna be in the 60, at least in the 60 mark. So right in the middle of that range. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, okay. So then you were saying, okay, let's decide on first, take a blood test, see if you are deficient and then you can supplement with them because uh, yeah, I guess if you don't, if it's, if you're not nutrient de deficient, then there's no point in, in taking it. But so how does that so what is your, in your experience, when you get these vitamins and you're in the proper, and I assume that you checked and you were not in the range and 
you, you know, because I can imagine when you mix vitamins too, just like anything, there's a synergistic effect, right? You got to get the right, the right proportions and all that. How, what, when do you see thicker hair because of this? Uh, How long does it take? Yeah, typically it takes three months from once you fix your deficiencies to when you start to see new hair, because that's how long the hair cycle takes. Um, So two and a half to three months is when you start to see new hairs coming back and you'll start to see a thicker head of hair when it's related to one of these conditions that we talked about. Even when it's hormonal and you try to reverse it and you start doing things to stimulate hair growth, then all of these results will be two to three months out just because of how, how the hair cycle works. Now, with some of these nutrient deficiencies, you can tell that you're low. For example, if you are, if you're vegan, then chances of you being low in iron are pretty high. And so you can make some educated guesses, but obviously test them. Make sure you get some blood tests done to see you know, where you're low, where you're not. Vitamin D3, it's, we almost know for sure, like 70% of the Western populations is low in vitamin D3. So get 20 minutes of sun every day, expose your skin, get out there. So some of the things you can fix on your own, and then, then you can take blood tests after that as, as you need to. Mm. So that's, that's pretty fast in three months to start, start seeing uh, the new baby hairs or the hair starting to get thicker. So then do people need to keep taking this for the rest of their lives or just until they're in the range or how, how do people get, up, get on with it? Yeah. So what I'd recommend is for people that are losing hair that maybe their scalp environment is not the best, you know, they're putting all kinds of dry shampoos or things in the hair that are clogging it down and they're just worried about hair loss, then I, we have a protocol that we help people with for three months. It's quite aggressive. You get started with a supplement, a serum, uh, a roller and a hairbrush, and you really get your hair healthy and good condition. And you start, re- you start growing hair. And after three months, you can start to pare down the protocol and you can start to you know, if you're replete, if you have other sources of getting these nutrients, then by all means, go get them that way. Um, if you think that you've gone past the situation, then you don't have to take our products anymore. But I just want people to know that with hormones, it's a chronic progressive condition. That's why people go completely bald. So you've got to do something to address the hormones, address the top, at least topically or systemically in your body. But for the first three months, we have an aggressive protocol, and then you can start to ease up on this but you still have to manage that for a longer time, right? Just, just how the condition is. Mm, okay, so it's really a tailor-made uh, program for yourself. You gotta figure that out. So how are you helping? Because you mentioned this protocol and you're helping people fix their hair, get it thicker and healthier. What exactly are you doing? Can you, can, I mean, can you reveal some of your, <laughs> your secrets yeah, yeah. and what we can do to, to, to fix it? Mm-hmm, absolutely. So first things, we have a supplement that we've made for hair wellness. This has a lot of really, really cool ingredients that help support your hair wellness. For example, it's got ashwagandha that helps you manage your stress. We know that's one of the reasons. Mm. It's got, uh, you know, the, what we talked about, D3, folate, B12, and a lot of other minerals and, and nutrients, vitamins that you need for your hair. It's also got a uh, saw palmetto extract, which helps balance some of the conversion from testosterone to DHT, which is a key uh, hormonal component. So a lot of this, it just brings your body back to balance and then, and, and, you know, takes care of any deficiencies you might have. Then we have every day we do a, a hairbrush and a, a serum. So you vigorously, vigorously brush your scalp every single day, 200 times before you go to bed. What? And then you apply- really? Hold on a second. <laughs> Yeah. I thought that was like grandma's grandma's um, recommendation. I mean, that's the kind of stuff you hear from ancient wisdom. And yeah. it's true because you're, how is that working? Like in yeah. terms of, and does it matter what kind of a brush you're using? Grandma was right, first of all, Zora. Uh, <laughs> we have a bamboo all natural brush because we, we don't want plastics going into your body. We don't want to mess with your endocrine system or your hormones in there. So completely natural. You can use any wide tooth brush that you want but it's got to really go in there and you've got to uh, you know you know get it get in there and really yeah. really brush and what it does is through a couple of things number one it helps bring circulation blood circulation to the scalp so you'll see your scalp turning a little bit red 
that just means there's more blood flow coming in. Blood flow is going to bring in all the nutrients that you either have in your body or that you've taken with a supplement. And so it's bringing all the nutrients to your scalp to help grow thicker hair. The second thing it does, it brushes off some of the dead cells from your scalp. So it, it, it cleanses your scalp so your cells have a chance to breathe. Mm -hmm. And so these are the two big reasons that we really push for this uh, 100 times a day and also causes microinflammation again when your hair gets red. And so your body sends in all these growth factors and healing factors to make sure that, you know, there's homeostasis. And so lots of benefits. Grandma was right. And I'm a big believer in using the hairbrush at least 200 times on your scalp. You can use it on your hair if you have longer hair, but the scalp is where all the magic is happening for hair growth. So you want to get it in the scalp all over and then put their serum on, which really boosts um, uh, the hair growth and provides a lot of topical solutions to it. And then the serum can also penetrate deeper because you've taken off some of the dead cells out of your scalp. So you said the, the brush is made of bamboo, right? Yeah, yeah. Is it bad for someone to use something that's not natural? No. Not so natural. what happens with, with plastics, as you know, the average woman uses 12 different products before she leaves the house in the morning when yep. she would, right? <laughs> and, and a lot of these products have all kinds of parabens, benzoates, like SLS, fragrance in them that have that just harm you they're endocrine disruptors they're obesogens they may be carcinogens so a lot of chemicals in these can go in especially for the endocrine part if you're if there's hormones or you know things that are messing with your hormones going to your scalp that's where you, it's sensitive you want to be careful because you're losing hair so we don't want any other things that are messing with hormones going to your scalp that's why and just for anti-aging and longevity reasons too we want to stay as clean and natural as possible. So that's why we have a wooden bamboo brush. You can buy any brush that you want, but uh, this is the one we sell and it's really, it's working for us. When you say we sell and it's us and we like give us exact, clarify what that means. Yeah, so we have a company called fullyvital.com. Ah. That's where all of these products are available. And we're working with chemists and advisors to not only bring really good innovations with hair wellness, but also we're looking at future products for, for gray and, and others, uh, other products in this space. This is so exciting. So this is your first, uh, product that you're coming out with yourself, right? Yeah. I'm so excited because you just putting it all together. Now you've learned so much and you've had your own experience of lifetime experience and you know, what's good in your body, what you should put it in it and what should, you shouldn't. And obviously through your experience and helping a lot of people. So it's so cool. I, I love I love when biohackers do this because you, know, you got your reputation on the line. Um, it's very serious and you you just have the hacks that other people may not even think about. So so this is cool. So the, your protocol is something that we can go to um, uh, your website, the vital, so fullyvital.com mm -hmm. and we can get the brush, we can get the serum, we can get the vitamins. And uh, was there something else? Yes, there's a beautiful derma roller. Oh, that we use. Oh, it's, it's gold. Uh, yeah, it's gold color. It's beautiful. And so this has shown to regrow hair more than any natural technique in the world. And so huh. we use this for the three months. We use this aggressively to really get your hair growing. And um, so, and, and then we combine this with the serum because it also helps the serum penetrate deeper into your scalp. So it's got two, two benefits. One is it really helps the growth factors come in there to your scalp and regrows new hair. I can say that with confidence um, because of all the scientific studies behind it. And then uh, when you combine this with the serum, you get the double effect of the serum as well. So once a week, maybe twice a week, if you're going aggressive, you use the roller to really get that hair growth going. And then after three or four months, you can stop using the roller if your hair is in a good place. I love it. You brought the roller out. So could we use that? Because we spoke about skin and you, you're the one who turned me on to the, well, we actually got the derma stamp. You had, there's a derma roller and a derma stamp. So I got that and you've turned me on to that. So could you use this derma roller also for your skin or is it just absolutely? For the yeah, absolutely. You can use it. It's a very safe needle length. So you can use it on your face as well. Cool. Oh, cool. All right. I love this. So then, okay, what is the serum? What's in there? Yeah, What's so magic serum, about it. Serum's got a lot of magic going on with it. It's got copper tripeptides in it, which are anti inflammatory. They turn on 4,000 genes. If you look at some of the studies behind copper tripeptides, we're very excited about 
having those. They also block the hormone DHT, which as we established is responsible for hair loss. So that's one. We're also using melatonin, a topical melatonin in there, which is an antioxidant, a strong antioxidant. And as we age, Zora, uh, not only do the hormones affect our hair, but also oxidative stress causes the hair loss. And so melatonin acts as the protector. So it saves your hair follicles and your cells and your scalp from damage. Um, we've got, um, what else do we have? We've got melatonin, we've got that. Uh, we've got Capixil, which is an active that's found. It's an industry active that also helps with anti-hair loss. Uh, we've got hyaluronic acid in there that helps plump your hair and scalp and helps your, you know, uh, reverse aging and improves elasticity so you, your hair can grow better. Uh, we've got, um, what else? We've got, you know, we've got a, a really interesting um, topical that helps deliver the, the solution deeper into the scalp. That's what we're excited about because the, we have a barrier in your scalp, right? Your skin is a barrier. And so for the serum to get into the hair follicle cells, we've got to make sure that it can penetrate, it can go into through, the, through, the, you know, through your scalp barrier. And so we've worked on a technology that allows you to get in there um, in a better way. So that's part of it. The other part, there's a couple of other agents that we have that improve circulation. Circulation is a running theme in, in our products. There's a red ginseng extract, which improves circulation in your scalp, and then also methyl nicotinate, which uh, also improves circulation. It's kind of like minoxidil or Rogaine, but mm -hmm. all natural. Uh, so that's one. We also have this really cool compound called methyl vadolinate, which uh, helps grow new hair. It's called, it's, it activates the wind pathway and turns on new hair growth. So anyway, I've said a lot of stuff, but all I'm trying to say is we've got anti-inflammatories, antioxidants, we've got DHT blockers, and we've got circulation enhancers that really, really make a huge difference in your scalp and your hair. So amazing. You put this all together. And the copper peptides, is it like the blue stuff that you shared with us last yes. time? Yes, yes. Oh, amazing. We had to... We had to get it right because if there's too much blue, then it makes your hair sticky. So oh. we had to play with the percentages a little bit so that, you know, what we wanted to do is to make it super lightweight so you can apply in the evening and you don't have to wash your hair off the next day. Mm -hmm. I know that women wash their hair a couple times a week. Uh, men also don't want to wash their hair every day. So we want to make sure that you can style your hair the next morning after you apply the serum without, you know, getting crusty or, or uh, yeah. really damp. Yeah, no, it's got to be the right for me. It's interesting that you said you've got this technology that can penetrate deeper into the into the roots because that reminds me, I have a galvanic spa, this facial spa that I use to lift my face and toning mm -hmm. and I love it. And there is a component, a little attachment that you can use in your hair with a serum. So there were, the idea is the galvanic currents are supposed to, I mean, you tell me, help the serum go in deeper into the into the skin. Does that really work? It, you know, it's possible. I haven't explored that technology, so I can't comment on it. But mm -hmm. uh, what we wanted to do with our serum is to make it so simple, so simple that you can use it every single day and you just, you know, use the brush and you apply it every single day without uh, having to do anything extra. Mm -hmm. So um, so the technology we use had to be all in the serum and um, and just get it in there. So yeah, but I'm not aware of the electric currents. Mm, well, it could be, yeah, for the next next product, but it would be another step. It wouldn't be as simple as just putting something on your hair. Like you got to really do sit, sit around with the, with the thing in it. So yeah. I, uh, I think that's really cool. What about, have you looked at how your product is on different types of hair, like Afro hair or curly hair? And I know it's all thinning, you know, but how does it help people of different ethnicities and different types yeah. of hair? It's a great question. We, you know, what's interesting about hair loss is it doesn't matter on what type of hair the hair loss is happening. It's all happening in the hair follicle and in the scalp. So as long as the scalp is clean and there's no inflammation and you're blocking the DHT and the hormones, then you're really improving the condition of the scalp, which will grow better hair out. How that hair comes out, it's, it's up to the type of hair. So luckily for us, we don't have to worry about whether you have kinky, coily, straight or wavy hair, it's we're addressing the root of the problem, which is the scalp. Mm -hmm. And so the the roller and the brush and everything in the serums are just work exactly the same for all types. Yeah. That's yeah, really exactly. good to know. 
yeah. good to know. So, okay, thinking about thinning hair, maybe somebody who was younger on this podcast and listening, uh, you know, I, as I was, when I was younger, I started, you know, straightening my hair or curling it with an iron, coloring it. I mean, we, you know, we do so much with our hair. And I always wondered, am I damaging my hair? Am I going to be making it thinner just by doing all these procedures? Are there procedures that are worse that damage hair more than, than others? Absolutely. Bleaching is probably the worst thing you can do on your hair. It just mm. really, really messes <laughs> it up. Bleaching um, and- meaning like highlights? No, highlights is not so bad, but like, you know, the full bleach that okay. women have to do every few months, yeah. um, it just, it damages your hair over the long term. It makes it brittle. It makes, so it breaks. There's, you know, those, those ends, split ends. And uh, so coloring, bleaching, processing, heat processing, all of these will damage your hair over the long term. Even things um, where you put in extensions in your in your hair because they're pulling on the hair every single day. And after a while, your hair just, you lose it. So coming back to that, um, you want to reduce processing in your hair if possible. Um, if you're coloring, I know women like to color their hair. It's okay. It's it's fine. But uh, try to see if you can go longer between, between hair, hair colors. And if you can pick maybe some natural hair colors as opposed to you know, some of these chemicals that are out there. And I'm not fully aware of, you know, all the different types of hair color, but I do know that when they're coloring your hair, uh, what they put in your hair opens up the cuticle of your hair follicle. And then it, there's hydrogen peroxide typically in it. So it kills all your melanin and then it puts new color into your shaft. So your, your whole hair is one color, but that's doing a lot of hydrogen peroxide is going in there. It's taking out your melanin there's a lot of stuff going on and it's opening the cuticle. Sometimes the cuticle will not close completely. And so now your hair shaft is now susceptible to other things coming in and causing more damage, which can lead to brittle hair, thin hair over the long term. Again, when you're young in your 20s, your hair is your power and you love it. And you know, that's your identity and you want to make it poofy and big. I get it. It's, it's beautiful. It's a great feeling. But I just know that over the long term, these are going to wear down your hair and then you're going to have to cut it short. And you're not going to love your hair later on. Even Jennifer Aniston talked about recently talked about the damage that some of these uh, things she'd been using with the processing and extensions specifically had to her hair and how she's dealing with that now. Oh, darn it. (laughs) Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I'm 51. So a lot of stuff has been going on in my hair the last, um, I don't know, 30, 40 years. So I may be paying a price, but it sounds like I can try to reverse it (laughs) with your protocol. So your protocol, yeah, it was interesting because you did mention, you know, getting to the root cause of the problem. And I like the fact that you have ashwagandha in there and hopefully managing stress. And what about, so is this a solution uh, even if you have this genetic component, even if you have um, the hormone imbalance, or is this something to use in conjunction with other therapies? Yeah, so we've researched the top natural ways that we can use to balance the DHT hormone, right? Because that is the number one cause for hair loss in men and women. So that you have to address that immediately. And so we've got multiple agents in the supplement and in the topical that block the DHT from your scalp and your hair follicles. On the supplement, we've got this thing called saw palmetto. There's multiple scientific studies behind it. it seems to work relatively effectively in uh, in men and and their studies have been done in men, mostly. Um, we've also got green tea, EGCG, which can block the conversion from um, testosterone to DHT. We've also got pumpkin seed extract in the supplement that also does the same. So we're coming at it from multiple angles to make sure to reduce that as much as possible in a natural way. Similarly, for the serum, we've got multiple ingredients in the serum. We talked about uh, copper tripeptides being one. Which, there's caffeine in them, which also negates the DHT effect and energizes hair follicles. So there's multiple agents in both the supplement and the serum that address the the cause, which is hormones, because that's the number one reason. And then we're also addressing stress, we're addressing nutrition, we're addressing circulation. So we're doing a lot of other bonus things, but the main number one reason uh, we've created this is to address the hormones and then everything else is a bonus. Mm, That's amazing, I love it. So, okay, then how much time do people need to spend on their hair every day? Like, what are we talking about this protocol and for how long? Sure. So let's just say you're following the full protocol, right? Supplement, 
twice a day it takes you 15 seconds each, maybe. Um, the hairbrush, depending on how knotted your hair might be, but if you can get straight to the scalp, then for me, for me, it takes one minute to do a, you know, maybe two minutes for to do a hundred. Yeah, hundred strokes. It's super easy. And uh, then the serum is just maybe another minute or two. We just apply the serum, and then I, I typically brush again after serum. But you don't have to. You can leave it, and then you can go to bed. So for me, it takes you know two to three minutes every single day. And mm. I'd assume for most men, it would take the same. I can't. The only you know women, I don't know you know how they would brush their scalp, but a lot of women that we're helping, they can seem to do it pretty quickly uh, as well. So mm -hmm. two to three minutes every day, and then once a week, you can use the roller, which might take you ten to fifteen minutes. Or, 10 you know, minutes once, for the once, roller. Yeah, 10, 15 minutes, once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. And you do this for three months and you'll start to see a, a big improvement. And take pictures on day zero, take multiple pictures all over your scalp, and then uh, send us the pictures at day 90 because we want to we wanna showcase you, but also want to support you on your journey. So call us, text us. We're here for you. Oh, I love that. So actually everything, I'm surprised the roller because one, I do believe you that it takes a few minutes because when we did the podcast on skin and you, I did the derma stamp, literally took me like a minute. <laughs> I'm like, that's it. Like, mm -hmm. I felt like I, I should probably go do another round because it was too fast. Like, how can I really have results? But, but yeah, that's how it is. You, you really, it's hard to believe, but yeah, it is take just a few minutes. So I do believe you with that. That's why I thought the hair roller, I was like, oh, I thought maybe it'd be even, even faster, but 10 minutes is, is, um, I guess it depends on how big your head is and <laughs> right. how to get through and how it. slow you go. You know, in the beginning, it's going to be a little bit longer because you're trying to figure it out, but the way to do it is you use it six times vertically uh -huh. and as you're rolling, it's recovering a lot of skin. Then you go six times horizontally and then you do six times diagonally on one side and then six times diagonally on the other side and you yeah. go section by section and for most people you just want to do this section i do my whole hair yeah. uh, at least in the sides um, that's just how i like to roll but you don't have to do everything you can for some people if you're just experiencing hair loss in the crown or the temples you just do the temples and it might take you two minutes you don't have to spend 10 minutes once a week right so it really depends on what you're going after and if you're looking for your whole head or specific areas that you want to pay attention to, it works. And the same thing for the serum. If you have only specific areas of hair loss, then your serum might last you months. It doesn't, you know, it's not one per month for the rest of your life. Yeah. It might last you months. And so really it, it depends on your condition, but, uh, but it, we're very excited about these products. So actually the, the vitamins, even they sounded like they'd be really good for your skin. Those are all the the nutrients you need for good skin. So are you seeing people also saying, hey, my skin is a little better too? We haven't gotten those testimonials yet because we're focusing so much on scalp, but uh, I'm sure as more and more results come in, we'll see all of those. We're, uh, we're seeing some with improved blood flow in men where they're happier about overall about things, uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Happy so, endings. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah, great. Yeah. So, that would yeah. make perfect sense. See, there's a lot of great stuff in there. So I can imagine just the side effects, the benefits of the side effects of the, yeah, there's probably a lot of stuff out there. And since when did you launch the, the products? So the products were launched this last summer or this summer in 2021. Okay. And uh, the serum was launched recently. And so we're, um, yeah, so we're excited. It just, you know, a supply chain, it took a little while for everything to get here. Yeah. And everything was backlogged more so than you would imagine, but, uh, but everything's there and people are using it and, and starting to see some great results. So we're super excited. Oh, you got, you got to, you, you have time to get more testimonials. Like this is, this is really exciting and you're going to see them just roll and roll and roll. So, but definitely ask people about how is your skin by the way, just, mm -hmm. you know, let's see what happens. So th then where are the products coming from? Where is this manufactured? Yeah, they're all manufactured in the United States, uh, in California. And ingredients? And, um, ingredients are, are being sourced responsibly from, um, again, these manufacturers have a lot of connections. And so I've worked with them to find good sourcing, not, not all from China, but good <laughs> sourcing for these ingredients. So we can be relatively certain that uh, we're getting good product. No, and good. we're also doing, with, with the batches that we make now, we're going to do testing for impurities for heavy metals 
uh, in every batch to make sure that it is legit and, and these guys are not cutting corners. Oh, good. Yeah, no, that's that's important. Yeah, we want to make sure we have sustainable products and they're clean and uh, and and they're efficacious. So that's cool. So where can people find you and uh, and get start getting started? Because as I understand, you have um, I have the fully vital dot com uh, fully f u l l y vital v i t a l dot com. And is there anywhere else that you're you're selling the products or? Where they can find you. Yeah, for the products, just go to Fully Vital, as Zora mentioned, fullyvital.com. And then if you want to connect with me, I'm at anti aging hacks on Instagram or anti aging hacks.net. Great. Yeah, anti aging hacks without any hyphen or anything, just straightforward. It's so easy to find you. Are you on Facebook? I'm on Facebook as well. And I think my my Facebook, yeah, you can find me on Facebook. I think it's R E A L real dot faraz dot com. Oh, realforaz.com. Okay, I'll have all of these in the show notes. And you were so generous and you're giving a coupon discount, coupon Zora15. Uh, for I guess that's 15% off for people Correct. winning. Yes. Awesome. Z-O-R-A and then the number one five, Zora15. That's awesome. Thank you. That's so very, very kind of you. And I want anyone who's listening to this podcast, and if you do go for this, uh, protocol, you have got to get in touch with me in three months time and let me know how it goes because we want your testimonials. <laughs> we yes. want to see how it is. And I highly encourage everyone also to go and find you on your podcast, Anti-Aging Hacks. Uh, that's just super cool. I think if you you like this podcast, you're going to love Faraz as well. You've got some great guests there and um, and you'll learn something new in every podcast. I guarantee it. How about you? What are you doing every day for your hair on a daily basis? Absolutely. This is what I do. I am a product of the product, Zora. Mm. I use a supplement twice a day. I use the roller. I've been using the roller twice a week recently, but uh, once a week is fine too. And I use the brush. I use it a couple of times a day. I use the brush in the morning and in the evening, just because I, you know, I want thicker, faster hair now. <laughs> and uh, so I overdo it. But it's not harmful. It's actually all natural. So it's, it's good for you. And then, of course, the serum I apply every night. And uh, the good part about the serum is I can apply it and then I don't have to wash my hair off every morning. And so I can go a couple of days between, between shampooing. So, uh, yeah. So I do that every day. And of course, as we know, you and I, we stay healthy and we, uh, we eat good food and, uh, and don't stress too much. Yeah. And get good sleep. What about generally foods? Like what other foods can people eat and get it from, you know, these vitamins from, from natural sources as well, in addition to, you know, just make sure they got all bases covered. Is there any food groups you'd recommend? Yeah, I think that uh, you just, as long as you're eating whole foods, as long as you're eating natural and tons of greens, uh, along with different colors of the rainbow with your foods and they're organic, uh, then you get a lot of these plant polyphenols in these different colors. And those antioxidants and polyphenols are what we've extracted in a lot of ways in some of our ingredients. Now it's hard to get salt palmetto, uh, which is the blocker of testosterone to DHT uh, naturally, because it's a plant that grows in the Southwest United States, but it's not something we eat or you can find in the grocery store. So that's hard, but you can, you know, you can drink green tea for EGCG um, that can help uh, balance your hormones as well. And then you can eat pumpkin seed extract, which also helps balance DHT. So there's natural ways to go about this. We've just made it uh, super simple and super easy for you to you take a supplement. But of course, if you want to go the natural route, definitely try that out. Um, eat you know all kinds of greens, eat berries, and uh, get those polyphenols and antioxidants in there. Yeah, I would bang it out at all sides. When I'm trying to solve a solution, I mean solve, solve a problem, I am trying it always. So get your good food and get take the nutrients as well from the supplement definitely just to cover the basis right and the mm -hmm. stress i have to say is super important because as we know when you're highly stressed you're not absorbing your nutrients you're not getting it from the food you're not getting from the vitamins so you really need to work on that so i highly recommend that as well but you've got the ashwagandha in there to cover that as as well but you know you got to work on everything mm -hmm. as, as well so thank you so much is there any last minute um things to say or to share before i let you go no Zora. thanks for having me on here we are 
you know, we're creating a system that's completely natural, doesn't require any drugs. That's what I'm excited about. And please, if you get it, text us your before pictures, work with us. We want to produce results for you. And, uh, and if we don't get your results, we don't want to get paid. We'll return all your money. So just pay us for results. And that's what we're so excited about is, uh, is getting results for you. So work with us, text us, email us, and we're here to support you. So money back guarantee. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. What I love, I know this is going to come from you as well. When I, I work with people who or meet people who have their own businesses just launching, you get great customer service. I mean, you know, I trust Faraz really wants genuinely to have great results. And, and I don't know any other big companies where you can have that really one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody who knows, right? You may just right. get somebody can all go ask the company or hold on, hold on, hang on. You are so accessible. So I think that's, that's, gold you know that's gold people pay hundreds of dollars for consultations with people like you and right. they're getting it included with just trying your product and and there's no risk there's money back guaranteed i don't see yeah. why you wouldn't try it i'm excited to try it i i know some people who are actually in their 20s with thinning hair and it is traumatic and I, I will definitely be back with you and, and uh, sharing my results with not only you, Faraz, but everybody else. I'll go and take those photos. <laughs> Fantastic, Zero. Thank you so much. All right. Well, you have a great day. And everyone else here, good night, good morning, wherever you are. And we'll see you next time.